College move-in is right around the corner and did you know you can still live zero waste while you're in a dorm? I'm here to tell you all the ways that you can do that in this video. Now, I didn't go to college in person, I did do online school because I'm in the Air Force, but also because I was in the Air Force, I did live in the dorms for a short period of time and that's actually where I began my zero waste journey. So it's definitely possible to start zero waste or continue a zero waste, low waste lifestyle while you're in college. If you have any further tips for living low waste while you're in a dorm, please leave them down below for the rest of us so that we can all have a more eco-friendly college experience this year and and in the next years to come. Hello everyone, it's Emma and welcome back to my channel where I talk about all sorts of things zero waste, focusing on free, easy, and fun ways to live low waste and practical ways to be an activist. If you're looking for more school related content, maybe you're not in college, maybe you're a teacher or you're in high school or middle school, you can check out these videos I have linked up here and down below. I have videos talking about how to be zero waste at school and I'm going to do an updated version in a week or two on here as well. Um, I also have how to live zero waste with roommates, how to live zero waste with your parents, and some other videos I will recommend for you down below. These are in no particular order, they just kind of, I wrote them done as they came to me so let's go ahead and jump right in the first one i have for you is to remember your reusables and always take them with you everywhere for example a reusable water bottle of course something like this or you can just reuse a disposable water bottle for quite a long time we did that growing up we had these really like high quality supposed to be single use water bottles and we would just fill them up and reuse them over and over and over again until they got gross. We, of course, washed them as best as we could because you can't put those in the dishwasher. I mean, I can't even put this in the dishwasher. You're gonna be washing it the same amount as you would be washing this. So you don't have to buy a fancy brand new water bottle like this. So we have our water bottle, of course, a reusable coffee cup, and you could get something fancy like this again, or you can reuse something like a jar. Of course, your reusable grocery bags. My favorite brand is Bagu. Here they are. They're super compact, very easy to throw into a purse or a backpack, and they fold out into a full-sized grocery bag, and they hold so so, so much. We get our weekly groceries and normally we only use two or three of these bags. Like they hold so much. But if you don't have those, and again, the budget option is to just reuse grocery bags from previous grocery trips, the plastic ones that you get at the checkout, just reuse those over and over again. Utensils as well, instead of using, you know, single use utensils when you go to the cafeteria, when you go get takeout with your friends, bring your own utensils with you to reduce waste that way. And of course your own containers. Again, if you're trying to get something to go from the cafeteria, you're going out for dinner and you want to get leftovers, bring your own reusable container to reduce waste that way. Speaking of reusables, the next tip is to use reusable dishware. Now this might not be possible because I'm not sure that everybody is going to have like a kitchen setting, but you can do dishes in a bathroom sink as well. Obviously you can't do a ton of dishes in there, those sinks are quite small, but even something like switching to reusable cups while you're in your dorm instead of red solo cups and using reusable utensils while you're in your dorm, something that is still small that you could easily wash in a bathroom sink, but will also have a really big impact by not using disposables, even if you still have to use, you know, disposable plates and stuff. There's also a lot of zero waste swaps that don't take up a lot of room and are not that like difficult to enact into your everyday life. A lot of bathroom swaps, for example, like deodorant and cardboard, shampoo bars, conditioner bars, body wash bars, face soap bars. There's a soap bar for everything, shave soap bars, safety razors from, for example, from Leaf Razor. We got toothpaste tabs, mouthwash tabs, bamboo toothbrushes, reusable makeup remover pads or wipes, silicone bags from brands like Stasher. There are so many more um, reusable period products for sure because um, these will also help you save money in the long run. And and of course they don't take up any extra space when you're in a small dorm room. Some of these swaps are a little bit too expensive for you because you know you are in college. You can ask for them as gifts if you're um, having like a high school graduation party, if you're having maybe, if people want to give you gifts before you go to college for Christmas, for your birthday, for Easter, whatever holidays you celebrate, you can ask for gifts. Ask for these zero waste swaps, especially the more expensive ones like period underwear for example. So that way you can still live zero waste as a college student without having to break the bank. When you're going to the cafeteria, dine in instead of take out if possible. I know a lot of times people might have to get back to their dorm to study or take their stuff to the library to study, whatever it may be. But if you have the time, sit down in the cafeteria, use their dishware if they have reusable dishware to save waste that way. And speaking of the dining hall, take only what you need. This goes with food, of course, because we want to prevent food waste. But if you take more than you can consume at that meal, take it home. Now, this is a very nuanced topic, I guess, in the zero waste world. And that is the topic of food waste versus physical waste. Me personally, I typically finish my meals when I go out to a restaurant. So it's pretty rare that I actually have to ask for a to go container. I will always ask for a to go container to prevent food waste. Of course, this does depend on how much you're actually taking. If there's like a bite or two left, that's probably not that big of a deal to throw away. But if you have like half of a portion left, that can be a whole extra meal for you. Take it home, even if it does mean that you use a little bit of waste because you forgot your container. Like me, I forget my container all the time. So we're just taking it back to tip number one, bring your own container so that if you do have extra food at your plate at the cafeteria, you can take it back and have it as a snack later. But this also means don't take extra napkins, extra ketchup packets, extra whatever disposables, and then just throw them away. If you do take extra napkins and you don't use them, take them back to your dorm. They make great free tissues or 
free cleaning rags, and so forth. Basically, take only what you need so you don't dispose of anything that you don't need to dispose of. If your university has accessible food options, try to eat less meat, be a little bit more vegetarian or vegan. You don't have to go all the way vegan or vegetarian if you don't want to. And you can learn more about why this is impactful for the planet in this video up here. One of the easiest things we can do as consumers is to reduce our meat consumption, particularly, but all animal products, because this is one of the most wasteful industries, at least in the United States. Same with like fast fashion, transportation, etc. So this is just one of the easiest ways that we as consumers can reduce our personal carbon footprint and also use our money to kind of sway um, supply and demand and show people that we want more vegan and vegetarian options. We want less meat because meat is bad for the planet. Of course, do what you can if you have dietary restrictions or whatever it may be. Your college isn't accessible in this way. Do what you can. When you're looking for your college books, look for ebooks or secondhand books. This will also save you so much money. Physical textbooks. So I started taking college classes when I was in high school and I had to get physical books for those classes. I don't remember how much they cost because my school paid for them but they were so much money and then when I switched to doing online school back in 2018 I don't think there was any cost for the ebook so like some universities will give you the ebooks for free which is great you can also borrow ebooks instead of buying them and then you can also sell your textbooks too to make a little bit of money back now if you do want a physical textbook I love physical books I think I find they're so much easier to read for me and like take notes and stuff so if you're that type of person as well look for them secondhand and I think everybody already does this because college textbooks are so much money this will save you so much money and of course it will prevent a lot of waste by not having to create new books over and over again and by not sending our books to the landfill and reselling them now we're on to some more digital tips. If you are fully immersed in the digital world, you love ebooks, you're gonna love these next few tips. This next one is to take digital notes as well and on your iPad or on your computer in a, in a Google Drive and a Word document. I'm sure there are probably even like apps and websites that are specific for note taking. Try that out this year to reduce physical waste when it comes to paper. If you do like paper though, just use scrap paper. I have a whole folder of it right here that's a whole bunch of paper i saved from my last job in las vegas to use and it was like stuff that was misprinted in the printer the back side of like documents like they would be only printed one side so i will take the back home and use that for notes if you're into a, like a more scrappy free way to live zero waste but you want physical notes that's a great way to do that and of course digital notes are great because you always have them with you if you forget your laptop but you what you're want to study you can study on your phone i don't know um but the next one in this category is to use a digital planner as well you can just simply use the calendar app on your phone but you can also use specific planning apps you can even download like planner templates i think you can download some from probably etsy and canva so check those out if you're into digital planners so i'm not sure about the rule with most colleges but for example um, my sister is going to college and as a freshman she wasn't allowed to have a car this inherently is eco-friendly because it forces you to walk or take public transportation but even if you are allowed to have a car on your campus consider other modes of transportation to reduce your carbon footprint and just reduce emissions overall of course we got walk Walking, biking, public transportation, you could carpool. If you still want to use your car, ask your friends to carpool instead of all of you driving your separate cars. And of course, this will not only save emissions, it'll save you money. And as a college student who's probably trying to save money, what a great way to do it by not spending money on gas. Now, speaking of not using a car, instead of taking physical classes, you can take online classes. Again, this really depends on how you learn as a person. I definitely prefer in-person classes. You know, it depends on the subject. I have an arts degree, so like it was very easy to do online. <laughs> Perhaps you're doing a more scientific or mathematics-based degree and you really do need to be in person to get all that information and have help when you need it you do you but this is just a suggestion on a way that you can um typically save money um a lot of online classes are cheaper especially if you're not living on campus and two it will save waste by not having to commute to and from your class or the campus entirely if your campus has recycling and composting use it and use it correctly know how to recycle i have a full recycling playlist you can check it up here the do's and don'ts of recycling what you can and cannot recycle your dorm or your campus should have rules posted as well like we take you know plastic glass paper metal whatever follow the rules make sure that they're clean and dry because the better that we recycle the more recycling that can take place if we recycle incorrectly it's just going to go to the landfill and then same with composting again my sister's college compost which is so cool if they have that take advantage of it this is great for the planet and it's also will probably make your dorm less stinky by not putting food waste in your garbage and then just having that garbage sit out in your dorm room especially in a small space i know how you feel you don't want it to be stinky in there one of the easiest ways to live zero waste is to reuse everything but specifically jars i feel like this is probably a pretty common food group 
I suppose. For college students, things like peanut butter, jelly, pickles, olives, salsa, even plastic containers like from hummus and so forth are so easy to reuse. Again, I mentioned you can reuse a glass jar as a to-go coffee cup. You can reuse a glass jar as a to-go water bottle. You can reuse them to organize stuff in your small space. You can use them to pack snacks. You can use them as to-go containers at the cafeteria. There are endless uses for jars. So just start saving them and reusing them, especially if you want like jars for cute decoration. Now you don't have to buy jars for decoration. You got a free one. When you're opting for snacks, choose the biggest option. I don't think I have a good example in here. You know, they make family sizes of stuff, a family size cereal box, a family size box of vanilla wafers, a family size bag of tortilla chips. Choose that instead of the smaller ones if you're gonna eat it all before they go bad. Why is this reducing waste? Because it's reducing packaging. I'm not really sure how much more these include in there, um, but let's just say for example, there's an eight ounce jar of peanut butter or a 16 ounce jar of peanut butter. By opting for the 16 ounce jar of peanut butter, you're reducing your packaging in half. You're cutting your packaging in half. So this goes for all of the packaged products you have to use. If you still have to buy stuff in packaging, like a lot of us do, whether you're in college or not, the bigger the packaging, the less packaging you're going to have to buy overall, the less individual pieces of packaging you'll have to buy, which is the less that you have to try to throw away or recycle correctly. And typically these also cost less per ounce. So in the long run, you are going to be saving money on this stuff as well. But this also goes for stuff like toiletries, right? Your shampoo, instead of buying small shampoos, buy a big one. Instead of buying a small bottle of ibuprofen, buy a big one and so forth. Buy the biggest option if you will consume it before it goes bad. If you like coffee and you make it yourself in your dorm room, what you can do is use a regular coffee pot, a French press, or pour over instead of a Keurig. I know Keurigs are very easy and convenient, so if you don't have the time, do what you can, um, but Keurigs are easily the most wasteful way to make coffee because of those little cups. They are, I think, a number five plastic, which is rarely recycled, plus it has food waste in it. So you have to remove the tin foil, empty it out, wash it out. Like it's so much effort to recycle correctly when you could just use something like a French press, which uses zero uh, waste at all. Or you could use something like a pour over or a regular drip coffee and use a reusable filter instead. Now, if you still like the Keurig, they do make little Keurig pods that you can refill yourself to make your coffee in so that there's no plastic involved except for maybe whatever you buy your coffee in. Those are some options for more sustainable coffee while you're in a dorm room. But honestly, you can use those tips in a regular house as well. If you have roommates or suite mates, coordinate with them before buying something or even bringing stuff to the campus just to save room. For example, things that you can share are things like kitchen appliances, a Keurig or a coffee pot, a blender, an air fryer. What other communal things? I guess you could probably share like a hair dryer, speakers, whatever. Coordinate with your roommate so that one, you don't all have to buy something and two, you're not all bringing it and crowding up the room with this stuff. By you not all having to buy an air fryer, for example, that's We'll just assume there's four. You guys kind of can all share one air fryer. That's three less air fryers that have to be created. Um, that will save you a lot of money and a lot of waste. Of course, you can try to find your appliances secondhand. I think we're gonna talk more about secondhand in a little bit. Try to find stuff secondhand to save you money. And if you end up not using your appliance for whatever reason, donate it again, instead of sending it to the landfill. For toilet paper, tissues, and paper towels, opt for recycled or bamboo instead of regular tree paper. Better for the environment because bamboo grows so much faster than trees. It's also a regenerative generative crop, meaning if you cut bamboo, it will grow back. A tree will not do that. As well as it takes trees tens of years to get to a point of harvesting, which requires a lot of water and maintenance. Bamboo is just not that high maintenance. Of course, recycled is probably the best because you're supporting the recycling industry. Nothing new has to be created for you to wipe your butt um, or wipe your counters if you're using recycled paper towels. And from what I found, they're typically about the same price. Again, if you if you find that they're more expensive, do what you can because you are probably on a budget as a college student or you can ask for these things as gifts. But also for paper towels and things like tissues, just don't use them. Don't use the disposable ones, use reusables. For example, all you need to clean is some old rags and stuff. This was actually, I found this at the thrift store and I think this was an old curtain. Like this isn't even supposed to be a rag, but I use it as a rag. Um, this we got as a wedding gift. Again, you can ask for cleaning supplies as a gift or just ask for hand-me-downs. Like if your older sibling, if your parents are upgrading to some new towels and rags, ask for the old ones. They will work well to clean your dorm room. You don't need anything too pretty. Now for things like make reusable makeup remover wipes, reusable tissues slash hankies. You don't have to buy anything for this as well. If you want to, my recommended brand is Bodhi and I'll leave them linked below. But I have also made my own hankies in the past from an old t-shirt, a t-shirt that didn't fit me. Well, it didn't just not fit me because I would have donated it, but something that was, it was hyper personalized. It had holes in it. It had stains in it. It was a t-shirt that I didn't think could be donated. So I cut it up and now I use it as hankies and it was totally 
totally free. I didn't have to sew anything and they're reusable basically for forever. Speaking of cleaning, it can also be very cheap and eco-friendly to clean in a dorm room. You don't have to buy, you know, those fancy refill tablets from brands like Blue Land and Clean Cult and all that stuff. You can just use white vinegar and baking soda. That's it, really. That works on most surfaces. And now in a dorm room, you're not going to have fancy surfaces like hardwood and granite or anything. You're going to probably have like linoleum. I don't know cheap stuff. You're gonna have cheap stuff in the dorms. So that's okay to use stuff like baking soda and vinegar on. Um, now I would dilute the vinegar a little bit, like 50% vinegar to 50% water, one part, one part, so that it's not too acidic. But this is, it's like $3 for a gallon of vinegar. And that will last you probably four years of college. Like you don't need that much vinegar to clean, especially if you dilute it, dilute it with another gallon of water. Very cheap and eco-friendly way to clean. You can also use eco-friendly laundry detergents. I have three reviews now talking about eco-friendly laundry detergents. You can check them out up here and down below. But I also, those those videos do include laundry sheets which I personally don't use anymore um, because they do contain PVA which is a form of plastic and I'm not so confident that my water treatment facility will filter out that plastic you can learn more about why PVA is so nuanced in two videos I will leave link down below but those are a great dorm option I'm not gonna lie they do take up the least amount of space they are zero mess they are easy to measure they're not the cheapest so you do do with that information as you will I think probably the cheapest and most eco-friendly option for a dorm room would be a powder because they typically come in cardboard they're typically the cheapest of the eco-friendly ones of course anything is going to be more eco-friendly than tide and gain for example you know most colleges are going to be in big cities anyway you can probably do PVA safely. But watch those videos and decide for yourself and check out my reviews for which eco-friendly laundry detergent is best for you. All right, I told you we'd get back to thrifting. Let's talk more about thrifting everything for your dorm, but specifically things like decor. Now, you might not wanna thrift stuff like bedding, but things like those three drawer plastic organizers, those are so popular in college. I sold two of them when we moved into here and those were a hot ticket item on Facebook Marketplace. So check for those secondhand, other things. Of course, decor items, whatever sort of theme you're going for, it looks secondhand. You know, box fans are pretty common dorm item. Plates and cups, like your, your reusable plates and cups that we talked about earlier, you can thrift those as well. You can check places like Goodwill and your local thrift stores, but you could even check online places like Facebook, Marketplace, eBay, OfferUp, Depop, ThreadUp. I think that's mostly it. There are so many ways to thrift for your dorm room, which of course will save you so much money and is so much better for the planet. I should make a full video on why shopping secondhand is better for the planet. I don't think I've done that yet. So if you're interested in that sort of video, let me know. You're supporting a circular economy when you're when you're shopping secondhand. And a circular economy is just an economy that's trying not to throw anything away. And then the same goes when you're done with your stuff. Even if you bought all of your dorm stuff brand new and you're trying to get rid of it, donate it or sell it instead of throwing it away to keep it out of the landfill and keep that circular economy going. Please don't fall victim to trends and overconsumption, especially when you're in college. This is a great way to save money by not falling victim to this stuff. Um, but it's also very, very wasteful because trends come and go. For example, you know, Hydro Flask was the big water bottle a couple years ago. And everybody bought one and now everybody's buying the Stanley Cup. Hydro Flask is dead and people are not using our Hydro Flasks anymore because they're using their Stanley Cup, which like, listen, they're both a form of reusable liquid container, which is great. I'm all for people not using single-use plastic, but use what you already have. If you already have a Hydro Flask, you don't need a Stanley Cup. Nobody's gonna actively make fun of you, especially if someone's making fun of you in college, like you're all adults now for using a Hydro Flask instead of a Stanley Cup. Grow up, first off. I've never been made fun of for using my off-brand metal water bottle that I got almost six years ago because I don't use the trendy ones. No one, no one says anything. That's all trends, right? They're, they're all going to come and go and eventually it'll be out of style and eventually it's going to be, have to be thrown away or donated. So just don't fall victim for them. You know, use what you have. If you need something and you want to replace it with a trendy item, go for it. But for the most part, you don't need the trendy item. My last tip for you college students, but everyone else who's watching is to download my free guides. I have a lot of free guides on my website. They are always linked in the description. My free guides that I'm specifically talking about in this video are my zero waste from home guide which means like this is a full guide. I think it's got a hundred tips for how to live zero waste actively in your home or your dorm room without ever having to leave. I also have a zero waste grocery guide and this is specifically for not having access to bulk shopping, which I know a lot of college students probably don't. If you do have access to a bulk store, use it to get snacks package free. At your average grocery store, your Walmarts, your Targets, my on-base grocery store here, like the Air Force Base, you don't need a bulk store to zero waste grocery shop. And my other guide that I highly recommend you recommend is how to spot greenwashing because I feel like 
especially as someone who is young and new to the zero waste movement, it's very easy to fall victim to greenwashing, which greenwashing is essentially a brand that's just pretending to be eco-friendly in order to make a sale. So this is really important to learn how to spot so that you can actually support the real zero waste brands and not support the greenwashing ones. And if you have any more ideas on free guides you want me to make, definitely let me know. I'm always up for ideas. I love making free resources for you guys. I just never know what to make. So let me know what you want to see from me when it comes to free guides. But that is all that I have for zero waste in a dorm. Please let me know your tips. If you are a college student or you have gone to college recently and you were trying to actively be zero waste while you're in your dorm, definitely let us know your tips down below because this was only 24 or 25 tips. It's definitely just a service level. And again, I never went to like an actual college dorm. So this was just ideas that I could think of without actually having been in that situation myself. As I said, I do have a video on zero waste school tips for if you are like an elementary through high school student or a teacher. You can check out that video, but we are going to be talking about it again, a little more updated version in two weeks. Next week, we are talking about food waste and why food waste is actually litter. So that's what's coming up on the channel. Subscribe if you don't want to miss those videos. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it or found any value. And please share this video with others. If you are a parent, um, a sibling of someone who is in college this year, share this video with them. If you are in college, share this with your friends because the more of us that try to live zero waste in every aspect of our life, right? Not just at home, but at college, at the office, while we're traveling and so forth, the more that the idea of zero waste will spread and the less waste that we will all be creating. That's all that I have. Again, thank you for your time. I really appreciate it, especially if you made it all the way to the end. I will see you next week. Until then, remember that your small actions make a big difference in the long run. Bye guys. One down, four to go. Now, I'm not sure the rule... Mochi? Anyway, where was I? If you like coffee and you make it yourself in your dorm room, dorm room?